Now I'd like to talk about uh, trees that have been planted in, in, a, in previous years. We're looking at a, a windbreak or a, a plantation that was planted less than 10 years ago. You can see quite a diversity of plants and uh, you can also see the windbreak quality of it too for stock animals and, and native animals too. Inside the, uh, the plantation uh, you'll see a, you can see the range of plants. There's some lower growing shrubs indigenous to the area. There's some higher trees that are indigenous to the area. But as we pan around, we'll, we'll notice some pruned trees, tall and straight, that have been managed by thinning out and pruning the side branches. So those straight, tall trees there will be in the future utilized for wood production, uh, high quality timber, or possibly firewood, but uh, mostly for high quality timber. The indigenous plants are there to uh, provide shelter for the timber trees, as well as providing shelter and food source, protection for uh, the native birds, uh, mammals, and uh, very importantly, insects, predatory insects, and, and others as well. So by having the various levels of plants, from ground covers and shrubs, up to the tall trees, you're providing different habitats for different birds. So you get species diversity in amongst the birds. That little dark plant there is a garnia, a sedge plant that grows to two to three meters. Very important for seed-eating birds. Sometimes we forget about the seed-eaters. We think about all of the uh, honey-eaters, but we forget about the seed-eaters. Various plants here providing different shelters and also a great windbreak for our farm animals. These are dianellas, a strap plant, very good replacement for agapanthus, beautiful to look at, lovely fruit. This is also a seed source for us in our nursery, providing seed for uh, growing for uh, plants to sell to customers. Blackwoods are a great tree for uh, erosion control, uh, lovely timber, uh, for high quality furniture timber, a bit slow growing, a little bit difficult to grow, hard to get to grow straight. So you grow them, grow a lot of them, grow them close together so they'll compete with each other and then you thin out the ones that aren't growing straight and you end up with a tree like that, nice and straight, still only young, hasn't proven itself yet, but um, it's got time to go. Here's a lovely little snowy daisy just about to come into flower providing a wonderful bird habitat. And we also think about the integrated pest management of a lot of plants, providing those shelter for predatory animals and insects and birds to uh, help out in the pasture, all the, the various grubs and, and insects that might be causing damage to your, your crops. Uh, by providing these trees here, you're, you're giving a shelter for them, for the predatory animals as well. Very important. Some of our plants are, are for producing food. that might be mountain pepper or native mint or even prickly currant bush. They all provide food for humans as well as animals. There's our pruned trees, blackwoods on the right, mountain gray gum on the left, nice and straight and tall. This is a paddock next door. Obviously the alpacas are enjoying the long grass and as we pan back we notice the the tree planting again less than 10 years old providing beautiful shelter for this protected paddock. You can see the fence off in the background the trees planted behind so the stock are no longer able to go into this area and as we go up the hill timber trees pruned and managed, thinned, growing straight and tall for future harvesting by the farmer, by our next door neighbor.